Hey guys, I'm Randy Younger, and it's another episode of Unger the Radar, where we talk all things film and sometimes TV. And with me tonight, I have a wonderful uh, panel of guest critics with me right now, Mr. Fars Bennett. Hey, Randy. <laughs> Welcome back, sir. <laughs> good, well, to good, good, good to be, be good yeah. to be back, as good, always. Good to see you again. Uh, and of course, Mr. Eric Godfrey. Eric, hello, sir. How's it going? Good to be back. For sure, for sure. Um, so... Before we uh, get into the fun stuff, um, I just wanted to just right off the bat um, acknowledge a very horrific uh, event that took place yesterday. Um, there was a school shooting uh, at, a, at a, an elementary school in Texas, uh, and uh, it was an 18 year old uh, guy, uh, monster. Um, killed 19 children, uh, two teachers, uh, wounded 17 others uh, at, at this, uh, at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. And uh, this is just one of many school shootings uh, within the last, you know, I mean, this has been happening for decades, unfortunately, but this is really, I would say, I mean, yeah. Columbine happened when we were in, when, that, we, were, yeah. when we were kids it's like it's, it's and like, that was 23 years ago. Right. So, you know, tragedies like this happen way too often and, and, and it's just really, it's just evil. And uh, thankfully the, uh, the shooter was killed by authorities and it's, it's just a horrific thing. And I just wanted to just take the, be the beginning of the show uh, now to just acknowledge um, and, and send our, you know, our hearts and prayers to the families of these uh, children who obviously did not deserve to die. Um, and it's just a really terrible thing. On a lighter note, uh, I just wanna go around and discuss uh, what are we watching this week, you know, what are, what are we streaming? What's, uh, what's in our DVD and Blu-ray players? Uh, Eric, go ahead, sir. Yeah, um, so uh, first one we um, was uh, season two of Russian Doll. Finally got to that. Okay. That was a nice little escape <laughs> from everything. And then also finding myself getting caught up on Doctor Who since we now officially have a new doctor. And uh, now with the 60th anniversary right around the corner with David Tennant. And uh, and uh, Catherine Tate, at, as of right now, confirmed as coming back to the show. I definitely want to be caught up and ready to go once there's a, a new doctor on the scene. Cool. The doctor is in. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, what are you watching these days? Let's see. I've, pre I've pretty much been my I, pre uh, I would say so for me these days, Nighthawk Cinema and <laughs> Alamo Draft House are yes. my homes away from home. Yes. So I've been seeing a lot of movies, in those theaters. Um, I think I think we still Last movie we saw Night Hawk was The Crow. Okay. Um, which was uh, uh, which uh, one of my favorite comic movies. And for me as an Asian American, it's a big deal because it was like one of the few Asian American superhero movies mm -hmm. uh, that existed when I was when I was a kid, nice. uh, you know, with the late Brandon Lee. Right. Um, also, uh, you know, because it was Friday, you know, Friday the 13th was recently, I went and saw uh, Friday the 13th parts four and six at Alamo Draft House. Mm -hmm. Actually, Friday the 13th itself, I went out to, to New Jersey and went to the campground where the original movie was filmed. That's awesome. That's right. uh, friend. How was uh, that, by the way? It, oh my God. You have, <laughs> it's, it's a bucket list item for any for any Friday the 13th or horror fan. I love it. And the town itself, it's like, like you go there, you go to the Blairstown on Blairstown, New Jersey on, on Friday the 13th. It's like having a second Halloween. That's cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I would definitely, definitely go there. And then, uh, TV, and then um, also, you know, because today is the 45th anniversary of Star Wars, <laughs> I am currently in the middle of a re of rewatching A New Hope for its 45th anniversary. Nice. Uh, and then on the TV end of things, I'm re I'm rewatching Stranger Things, okay. the first f three seasons in preparation for the new season. Okay. And of course, uh, just the other night we went to see Back, Back to the, the Future. Future. It was a, a movie party at the Alamo Draft House, House. in downtown Manhattan. And that is my third home away from home. Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, and next to the Nighthawk, of course. Uh, so we had that. That was a fun movie party hosted mm -hmm. by your friend. Tony Ortega. Yeah, that who, was. Who hosts a uh, James Bond podcast yeah. also. Uh, we're going to have to have him on the show uh, at some point. Seems like a, a really knowledgeable uh, film buff. So he is. That's cool. So yeah, basically the, the movie party, they gave us glow sticks. So whenever. Pluton we, they gave us complimentary plutonium. Yes, it's awesome. I should have brought it. <laughs> 
Yeah. Op- um, and uh, girl one Calvin Klein underwear. Yes, yes. <laughs> And whenever the DeLorean would go back in time, we would wave the glow glow sticks sticks in the air. And it was just a lot lot of fun. Um, So yeah, that was a really cool screening. Uh, We're actually going to see Back to the Future Part 2. And 3. Yes. Uh, Is 3 at the same theater? Yes. Perfect. Um, But those aren't movie parties. They won't be interactive. It's just a screening. But for us, like, you know, this is something we're crossing off our bucket list. You know, finally seeing the whole trilogy in theaters. Yes. Yeah. I've never seen the second one in theaters. I'm very excited. Or the third one. I mean, I had seen, I mean, I already seen the first one in theaters uh, Mm -hmm. uh, over a decade ago. Yeah. But this is my first time seeing both seeing both sequels. They should do a movie marathon, all three back. They did it. They did it back in 2015 on Back to the Future. I'm sure they've had, so. I wish I were there for that. that Me was, too, but I was working when they had it. Right. Anyway, um, and that same day, a little bit earlier in the day, we're going to be seeing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The original. From 1990. <laughs> and Hawk. Um, we're oh, going to start man. our day off with, with, with Ninja Turtles, followed by Back to the Future Part 2. We're reporting like it's, 19, <laughs> like it's 1990. Yeah, yeah. And I love geeking out with this gentleman. So that's going to be fun. Um, all right. So as for me, stuff that I'm watching... Uh, thanks to uh, another uh, guest critic on Under the Radar, uh, CJ Oakland turned me on to uh, Barry, starring Bill Hader. Uh, and this is, I'm only on episode, uh, season two. There's three seasons so far. And it's fantastic. If you guys haven't seen it, I haven't seen it, but I heard good things. I, about it. And yeah, I'm in the same camp. It's one of those ones that's been forever on my to watch list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I saw that Henry Winkler won his first Emmy for it. Oh, that's awesome. He deserves it too. But basically, uh, in a nutshell, it, it, a Bill H- Hader plays an assassin who goes on these jobs in, uh, in Los Angeles. And eventually he gets involved with an acting class. So now he's trying to figure out whether he wants to be an actor or a hitman. And he's kind of weighing both lifestyles. <laughs> and it's not only funny, but it's like, it's kind of heartfelt as well. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's very well acted. It's very quirky, very funny. Henry Winkler is, is amazing in it, uh, as are most of the other uh, cast members, including Hader, who I believe is also a writer and a producer, if I'm not mistaken. I, I know it's pretty much his baby. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Barry, uh, that's basically what I'm watching right now, religiously. Uh, I take little breaks between that and watch uh, random clips of Triumph, the insult comic dog <laughs> on YouTube. I love Triumph. Yeah. He like at, at work when I'm on my lunch break, I just play like a bunch of clips and it just brightens my day. So yeah, really, really funny. For me to poop on. So uh, there's that. And uh, yeah, we just have the students at, at the Nighthawk and the Alamo and it's, it's great stuff. Uh, Eric, are, are you a fan of the Nighthawk and Alamo? I have. It's been a little bit of a while since I've been there, even before the pandemic hit. The um, I haven't really been to the Alamo. I think I was there for once, but the Nighthawk we would frequent there quite a bit. Um, I, I know we went to go see It Follows there. Hmm. Um, like we would go to a lot of horror movies there. Weirdly enough, but yeah, I go there um, for midnight movies a lot. I uh, I, I saw Hereditary there. Um, nice. um, so it's just like I've always been a fan. It's just unfortunately for. For for me and the wife, it's just out of the way. But it's one of my favorite theaters to go to mm-hmm. wherever, yeah. ever in there. I like. I, I tell you, the the it follows audience was the perfect one. I remember it was so dead silent. Somebody accidentally dropped their tin, or like a like a <laughs> a, a tin of uh, popcorn. You just heard it go ding, 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 and just like and it just like broke the silence during like an incredibly <laughs> tense scene, and the entire everyone just started busting out laughing. That's amazing. Yes, I lo- yeah, I love that that interactive theater experience is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's such a great theater. I, I love going there whenever I can. And then I I'm, I don't remember what we saw at the Alamo, but I know I just I'm a big fan of that style of it. Just it makes theater going. Yes. Fun. Yeah. J- just the idea of of having like a nice snack or a meal and a mm. drink while you're watching a movie, not just popcorn, but like you know uh, tacos uh, yeah. burgers yeah exactly um, it's just a, it's just a great experience and, and not having to be bothered by talking or phone yeah. people using their phone yeah actually having actually having people there to like to watch maintain the, movie. the peace mm-hmm. that's the way it should be i think every theater should adopt that that model but, agreed uh, yeah mm-hmm. um all right guys so let's get into our first review um we've got the current film I guess you can call it a, a, a reboot or a, it's actually a sequel to. They said they said it's not a reboot; it's a it's comeback. comeback. It's not a reboot. That's how they promoted it. Uh, we've got Chippendale Rescue Rangers, 
And yeah, Rescue Rangers. <laughs> this movie screams nostalgia. It's very meta. And uh, I, I had a blast watching this. Mm-hmm. It's just a fun movie all the way through. Um, and if I, it's 30 years after the uh, TV show ended. And basically, uh, Chip and Dale are reunited when uh, their good friend uh, goes missing. Want to Ray Jack. Yeah. Was that a spoiler? I don't know if it's a spoiler. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. I mean, I mean, if you watch <laughs> Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers yeah. as a kid, then you should then. Uh... Okay. So you knew, that, you knew that cheese addiction was going to get him sooner or later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Touché, sir. Um, but yeah, Monterey Jack goes missing. And now Chip and Dale, um, are, there's kind of some hesitation to basically team up again. And they go on this crazy Roger Rabbit-esque adventure. And uh, yeah, it, it combines live action with the animation mm-hmm. and some computer animation too. We've got fantastic, uh, fantastic voice cast. Uh, John Mulaney and Andy Samberg play Chip and Nail. We also have Will Arnett, Eric Bana, Keegan Michael Key, Seth Rogen, J.K. Simmons, and uh, Kiki, Kiki Lane. Lane is in it too. Um, well, I kind of wish that, although I'm, I'll admit, I kind of wish that they had brought back. So I wish that they, I mean, even though the original voice actors are in it, I wish that they had they they had some of them in there as their original characters, like Jim Cummings. Like mm-hmm. I know Eric Bana was playing Monterey Jack in this one. I'm like, why didn't they have? <laughs> have yeah. jim cummings when he's like when he's still alive and still, still working exact. right yeah. still working um well that's a yeah that, or I, like I, um i, I, I can uh, understand that. yeah like, this is what i, I mean technically you even had the original chip and dale during yeah Corey their Corey scenes you still heard the original for briefly and gadget that's still her original voice it's still trust mcneil yeah. and idris elba as uh as as it. um and uh yeah, and then uh, also I wish they got also like for like they had a cameo from uh, Baloo from the Jungle Book, and, yeah. and I wish they. Had <laughs> oh, there were there there were a number of cameos. Yes, just a, a few. Just, just, just a few. In, in Baloo's case, I wish they had gotten a voice actor who sounded a little more like Phil Harris, or I'm trying to remember the voice actor's name from uh, Tailspin. Um, oh yeah. yeah, but yeah, he didn't sound. Like, I, I was hoping they'd get someone who because that's I know like when uh, voice actors are replaced. Yeah, they try, usually try to get get repla- the replacements usually try to sound you know they try to get replacements that sound like their predecessors yeah yeah um and i wish they had a little more effort on that on that's like, true some, with some of these characters well i mean yeah. i i went back and i rewatched the first episode of the the animated series and they were they, they had the chipmunk voice oh yeah yeah, they the, uh, yeah and they, they well, acknowledge like yeah the voices well the, the gag that i like is the fact that they kind of hint at you know that it's like well that's our tv voice <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. this, this is what we sound like once the cameras aren't yeah. rolling that would be kind of irritating if they if they kept those original voices oh, throughout the whole absolutely. movie. Yeah. But um I, I like I said, this has like this is like the new Roger Rabbit, and it's I mean, so good. It so is. Good. I remember there were rumblings for years of Disney, like rumors for years of mm-hmm. Disney going to do another Roger Rabbit movie, but they never did it. Okay. I I sort of feel like what they I feel like that this chip, this movie, they, it, it feels like whatever that Roger Rabbit sequel would have been. They basically yeah. just, you know, modernize it and repurpose it for Chip yeah. and Dale. And it works. Yeah, no, I, I was not expecting the Rescue Rangers movie to be the spiritual successor to, to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And I think that's why it caught me off. I, there were two moments I had, I was laughing <laughs> so hard. I had to, I had to pause the movie because I had missed so much because I was like, I was not expecting how funny it is because I think it was yeah. just like every five minutes I was turning to Rachel and just being like, I can't believe Disney okayed this. Yeah, right. <laughs> especially, like certain just... cartoon, especially certain characters yeah. from yeah. Uh, from more mature cartoons. Right. It, it's uh. something the whole family can enjoy, not just kids but adults. I think this mm-hmm. is more entertaining for adults. It's selling more for the parents. Yeah. Oh, like, absolutely. The parents who like, grew up on just... the original. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to rewatch it again so badly, but yeah, it's just it's so funny. Like that's just what I yeah, wasn't expecting. I I don't think I've seen a movie uh, this nostalgic in yeah. quite a while. This really hits all the right. I mean, notes. I mean, space. I mean, that new Space Jam tried oh. to do that, but it's like they just it we don't talk work. about space. I mean, this like, this man. leaves all like this takes nostalgia right. and uses it so well. Like yeah. it's it's like yes, it's like look, it's that it's that blah blah blah, but it makes it so funny. Like just what yeah. you can do with a Seth Rogen joke, <laughs> that even, <laughs> even Seth Rogen makes and just. And I just I, I I love this movie. I absolutely adore. Like it is one that it's just it's like it it is now double feature Roger Rabbit and now Chip and Dale yes, Rescue Rangers. Yes, yes, that'd be a great double feature. Uh, maybe we can do something like that in the future, like a yeah. like a like a. And what, what I concert. what I 
appreciated about that, especially with Roger Rabbit showing about the just the crazy amount of what you can do between live action and 2D. And what I loved about Rescue Rangers was it felt like almost every piece of animation is referenced from 2D to 3D yeah. mm-hmm. to even stop motion g- gummy. Yes. There, 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 yeah, that one scene where they had like a like this ray gun or some mm-hmm. kind of device mm-hmm. that would yeah. transform you uh, into a CGI. Into no, but not just CGI, but different animations. Yes. Yeah, different animations. That was so smart, beautifully mm-hmm. done. Um, like I, you I, even I, had I, um, one of my favorite jokes with the with the Muppets. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's just like all these different styles existed inside of that, and so it took it really. It was kind of the thing. It took everything that Roger Rabbit did and expanded upon it. Yeah. And just from like an animation standpoint, I thought it was remarkably well and done. And in a way, this is in the same universe because they do mention right. Jessica Rabbit. Well, right. they, well, I mean, in the, in the trailers, they they point talk about how they did the how they danced the Roger Rabbit with Roger Rabbit. There you go. So this is a perfect and Roger Rabbit appears himself appears in it. It's a a perfect companion piece to it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I definitely want to rewatch it. Oh. Yeah, now but now I'm thinking about. It, I'm like, should this have gone? Should this should this have gone to theaters or or was or did they make a right call making putting it straight to Disney Plus? That's it's it's tough date. because I feel like a movie like this it's going to do very well now because I think there's a lot of people who would have seen this and even I was hesitant when I first saw it I'm like yeah, okay here. this could either be really good really bad yeah and I'm <laughs> glad to see it wound up on the really good side right. and so it's one of those ones where I feel like having it for streaming is going to make it so people see it but I could have seen this released in theaters being like have a having like that first weekend where nobody sees it and then all of a sudden your friends are like did you go see Chip and Dale? It's it's hilarious. You gotta go see it. It's like best comedy of the you know yeah, best I mean, comedy of the summer. So I don't know. Although I feel like movie, those kinds of movies are kind of far and few between these days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, because I, I week, didn't. It's gone. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize how much this was basically also a Lonely Island movie because he had Akiva. Um, Akiva. I can never say. It. Yeah, he directed it. He had Sandberg. Yeah. And I mean, it's like unfortunately for whatever reason, pop star never stop never stopping mm-hmm. isn't the legendary movie it deserves to be <laughs> hmm. yeah this movie uh i, I can't I, I can't praise it enough and uh it's, I, you know, it's, it's on my short list of like of uh of like major of like major major cinematic adaptations of cartoons done right last yeah. year we had tom and jerry and space jam and new legacy which were two of the worst Awful. movies of the year yeah now well, we have this, this is what is, this is what tom and jerry wanted to be that yes. that interaction between the expect, real world and the animation this is what i wanted yeah. both those movies to be but, yeah yeah <laughs> i guess third looks the charm so here we I go guess, oh, yeah i guess it's just like also it's not war- also this disney not, not warner brothers and disney mm. actually treats their animated properties with, with respect, respect which right. warner brothers like they like they they like uh they you know they have the looney they've had the looney tunes for decades but they don't know what to do yeah. with them yeah Again, I just I wish I knew I wish I could have been there in the room because it just it feels like like at every turn I have expected Disney to be like, you can't do that. You can't show you can't do it. It's like I'm glad that whoever worked at Disney the day that they're just like, here's what we want to do with all with this character, this character, this character, and it's like fine, just make it funny. And you know what? Um I think most of the credit has to go to the writers. Uh mm-hmm. Dan, absolutely. Dan- Dan, Dan, Dan Gregor. Gregor and Doug Mand. Uh, I'm not familiar with these two gentlemen, but they are geniuses based on this film. Um, um, I don't know, remember which one uh, Rachel would definitely know. One of them is married to Rachel Bloom of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Okay. And he was also did did a lot of writing on uh, How I Met Your Mother. Okay. okay. So he's he's been doing comedy. He And he also wrote a lot with Rachel Bloom for uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Oh, nice. So kind of like that smart, quirky, quick wit. Yeah. All right. And it, and the back and forth between Chip and Dale is is kind of yeah, it right, does right. now that you mentioned it does kind of feel like how I met your mother uh-huh. a little bit it's got that that snarky uh, fun attitude that's mm-hmm. cool um, well I mean also, Sandberg and Mulaney have just mm-hmm. always had great chemistry together yeah they were I think they were pretty perfect uh, voice wise mm-hmm. also J K Simmons uh, who can <laughs> who can do no wrong yeah yep. who is hilarious uh, as this like claymation detective purple gumby like yeah, basically the yeah the gumby detective <laughs> hilarious oh man um and after watching this i actually i went i i revisited the first episode of the animated series 
I think I may uh, continue watching because it's actually a really good show. Yeah, a lot of those, a lot of those, I a mean, lot of those Disney cartoons from the late eighties and early nineties hold up really well. I mean, I was more of a Ducktales guy and Jungle Book. Um, I would say, and, um, and Tailspin. I would say, I would say, the, of the, all the Disney afternoon shows for me was I was more about uh, Darkwing Duck and Gargoyles. There you go. But I, but I, I did love Rescue Rangers. I was one of those. I loved watching it, and so yeah. even when the Nintendo game showed up, I was just was like, "Yes, I played that all the time too." <laughs> um, I had most of the Happy Meal toys, which were amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, again, total nostalgia factor here yep. in Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And uh, Eric, I think, it, uh, Bars, I think it's safe to say that we, we all three of us, see, see it. it. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably going to be my favorite comedy of the year. Yeah, I think it's on my. It might be creeping up on my top ten. Yeah, Maybe. it's one oh, I'm right. definitely going to revisit. I mean, I for me, I for me personally, I just I just, I dinged it based on some of the choices in voice cast in uh, some of the casting choices for voice actors. Okay. Um, I just felt like they could have brought back, but you know, I, one problem I have with with animated movies now, yeah, is that they is that they te- is that they tend to go for names. Rather than like profession, as opposed to like right. professional voice actors. That's how they get audiences. So they throw in, you know, John Mulaney, Andy Samberg, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's instant star power. That that's how they get the views. I, I, on yeah. the bus or I can't. I can't. I, I literally cannot think of the last comedy I watched where I had to pause the movie because I was I was just laughing, <laughs> just but yeah, so still, hard. Yeah, but yeah, it's still a solid. It's still a solid. Uh, Buddy yeah. comedy, uh, animate animated adventure, and yeah. uh, a little noir. I, I mean, noir, noir. You know, the the plot is a little stale. It's been done before. The whole mystery crime thriller action with a cartoon with cartoon right. characters. Yeah, but the, everything else, all the other elements are in place, and all the other other elements are strong enough for you to overlook the the plot that's kind of generic. Uh, and it does feel fresh and original. And that's the mm-hmm. one thing, I, the, the, the originality and the nostalgia factor. Those are the two things that won me over with this movie. So, so yeah, Chippendale Rescue Rangers is now streaming on Disney Plus and so are the original cartoons, the uh, animated series from the late eighties, early nineties. And I believe there's some classic Chippendale cartoons that yes. go even further back. Yep, yep there are. <laughs> So the whole uh, Chip and Dale library, I believe, mm-hmm. is, is on Disney Plus. So go check that out, guys. Awesome. Um, oh, okay. So I think it's about time for a commercial break. So <laughs> we're just going to, we'll be back in a little while with more Under the Radar right after this. Under the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Randy Younger on the radar, and we're halfway through, guys, and we got through a really fun movie review. Um, and I'm I'm really excited to see our end of the year list. See if it makes the cut. Um, we shall see. And uh, yeah, that's Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Uh, now we're gonna switch gears drastically. I must say, yeah. <laughs> um, this movie is called Men, and it is written and directed by. Uh, auteur Alex Garland of Ex Machina and Annihilation fame. Uh, and he, basically this tells the story of a young woman who goes on a holiday in the English countryside following the death of her ex-husband. And while she's in this beautiful house in the middle of nowhere, uh, she begins to get stalked uh, by one, maybe a few people it's kind of men yeah maybe uh and you know it it gets progressively uh 
darker and more disturbing uh, mm. as the film goes on. And um, the young woman is played by Jessie Buckley, who is a phenomenal actress. Uh, she was, this is her show. This is, she stole the show. And uh, we've also have Rory Kinnear, who plays, basically, he plays different roles uh, of the men in this, this small town. Um, and this is just a, a sick, twisted, psychological thriller with um, horror elements. It, uh, it can get a little gory at times. I would say straight up horror. Straight up horror? Yeah. I'd say thriller horror or horror thriller. But uh, it's, I would say it's like, well, psychological horror. But, yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, I wouldn't even say it's, it. I wouldn't put it like anything but horror. Yeah. Um, well, definitely the last act is horrific. Um, and yeah, it, it is bloody. It is psychological. Cool. It's this poor woman. And there's a lot, and there's a, and also there's a lot of, there's a lot of yellow dong hanging in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, no spoilers, no, no, no dong spoilers. Um, but yeah, this movie was, was, uh, was quite a ride, I, I must say. And it was truly disturbing. I was actually glued to my seat. Uh, I went to the Kew Garden Cinema and slight plug there, fantastic theater in Queens, um, fantastic film. And, uh, yeah, uh, Eric. I know you. You unfortunately did not get to see Men. For uh, I really, uh, I want to see it so badly. I I love Alex Garland, and I really want to see this. What are, What is your um your impression? Actually, before I get to that, Forrest, you did see the film. I did. So, uh, what did you think uh, of Men? What do I think of Men? Yeah. Oh, well, I like Alex Garland. I like you know I love Al I love Ex Machina. I loved you know, Annihilation was also really good too. I think right. I think he's one of the new. Masters of genre filmmaking. Okay. Um, this set of this, you know, the last decade. Yeah, for sure. Um, I um, actually, I actually saw Ex Machina and Annihilation for the first time in preparation for this review. Um, I think this this ranks number two after Me Ex Machina for me. Uh, I was not thrilled with Annihilation, Eric. You may disagree. <laughs> I, do, I, have, I, I love Annihilation so much. That's okay. such I, a, I, I, yeah. Ex Machina. I remember seeing that when it came out. And okay, that was, was really blown away by that. I um, think Ex Machina is probably his most uh, probably approachable. It's yeah, definitely it the most so. straight up. Like, here's what it's like. It, it, it's it's very much here's what it is. And granted, it's much more complicated than that. Whereas Annihilation, yeah, I, I feel oof, like that's then, that's an onion to peel. I feel like both Men and Annihilation are def are definitely two movies that'll make uh, make audiences a lot more uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, was Annihilation released by A twenty four Films? I think. So. I don't. Not no. Sure. I don't. No, actually, sure. that might have been a more main. I think because I think that might have been a main street. Because Men, yeah, Ex Machina were both released by A twenty four. Right. And I've mentioned this before on the show. Um, I, I this is I think this might be my favorite uh, distribution company because they keep churning out hit after hit such very smart interesting films mm -hmm. great stories um and there's going to be another one coming up um marcel the shell with the shoes on <laughs> oh um I, i'm i'm in love with that trailer but we're going to save that for another sh another show um, looks like paramount was uh responsible for distributing uh annihilation all right, right. that's why I, I i didn't think it was a24 Mm -hmm. but, um, but anyway, uh, yeah. men. But yeah, men. I was really was really well done. Um, yeah. I, this this poor woman just cannot just. Nobody she goes through so much crap. Go through so much hell. It's, like, <laughs> it's terrible. Like nobody listens to her. Nobody leaves her alone. Right, right. Um, and I want to. Everybody just like try is like trying to get trying is trying to get in her business. Right, and I want to commend Rory Kinnear, who plays basically every man and, in the in this town. And is she, is she losing her mind? Is she imagining that, that this guy, you know, it's really, it's up to you to decide. I mean, mm -hmm. but in, in the end, it's just this really, it gets very gory. It gets very twisted and disturbing. Twist. Uh, yeah, very uh, like kind of a uh, <laughs> mind. Uh, mind, yeah. Mind, yeah, mind <laughs> screw. Yeah. Um, Eric, I, I think you're in for a treat, my friend. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. I, I really can't wait to see what he has in store. And also, te also on a technical level too, I think it was really well done. The editing, mm, right? Um, oh, the cinematography was beautiful. Like all, like, it's, uh, it's, yeah. All it's hilarious that Rory Kinnear keeps getting cast as uh, as playing multiple people because he recently just did uh, Our Flag Means Death, where he plays two separate roles on that as well. Huh. Maybe they, <laughs> I was saying maybe they should put maybe they should put him in a movie with Eddie Murphy and Mike Myers. Yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> 
and that should have been called men that that that, <laughs> that dream project yeah for sure yeah oh man but roy kinnear he's got one of those faces like I, i've seen him around you know in, in different projects and uh yeah he he knocks it out of the park oh yeah he's always fit. like again our flag means death one of the best best shows right now come on season two hbo make it happen mm -hmm. um um, I always think of his episode of Black Mirror because that's the one everyone always goes to. That's the one where that's the first he's actually in the first episode of, of Black Mirror. He's the prime minister who has to copulate with a pig. Oh, I remember that, that episode. <laughs> um, and for whatever that. reason, he's always been for like every time speaking of like I mentioned Doctor Who at the top, every time there's ever been a new doctor, uh, Rory, he's always shortlisted as the next doctor <laughs> by uh, by UK's uh, media. Oh man, that's funny. But yeah, I, I, I have to, I'm going to check out his filmography because mm -hmm. he is amazing in this. I um, believe he was um, in the Pierce Brosnan Bond era. He was M's like a uh, bodyguard. He, he, he was uh, constantly one of the people <laughs> working for MI6. I think he was like either M's liaison or something, but he's in most of the Brosnan era films of, uh, of Bond. Now that you mention that, yeah, he he does seem yeah, mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. seem familiar in that respect. Um, and the, and Jesse Buckley, she oh, she's so good. Yeah. Uh, what have I seen her in? I've definitely seen her in in various films, but um, yeah, this movie uh, I saw it last night, and I'm still kind of digesting it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's just so good. Uh, and this might this might reach my top 10 yeah well. same here I agree. It, it, it's creeping up as well so like yeah. anything that gets cinema like as um you know i was reading about it, it gets the i got the cinema score i think of like a d or a d minus from audiences which is like hmm. like like well, i think the only other movie to like it. top it was uh aronofsky's uh mother got an f with cinema score oh god <laughs> and it's like wow. and it's like no, no matter how good or bad when when a movie hits that it's fascinating yeah and so i'm definitely very interested to see what it is that alex garland did that just has turned so many people off from it <laughs> i don't know i feel i feel like it's you know because i feel like there's there are some you know there are some factions of moviegoers and horror fans who feel like maybe this movie's a little too woke um uh -huh. Okay. Or maybe the, or maybe that friend or because I feel like the, yeah this movie has a very strong feminist message which may not which which uh, for some some which may not sit well with some moviegoers, mm -hmm. um, but so that, that that could polarize audiences. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, see that. Bring I think it's it done tastefully. Yeah, yeah. it was all done well. It was done well. Yeah, with a lot of new. I think it was done with a lot of nuance and mm -hmm. um, um and. The, I just want to talk about the, the location of this English countryside. Beautiful, absolutely perfect mm -hmm. uh, setting for this story to take place because um, it's basically the middle of nowhere. Very isolating. Very serene, very quiet. Anything can happen yeah. in the and darkness. Again, well, yeah, and very I isolating, which I think, which, which I think uh, goes with this, woman, well, so this, with this woman's situation where right. like, nobody's helping her. Right. And, you and I was going to say, Ex Machina is also a very pro-feminist. It has very feminist messaging, and especially mm -hmm. with the way, um, just the, the idea of control and her taking it back is such a and I huge like, yeah. part of, and yeah. especially, like, there's a, there's a lot of that in Yeah, actually, in actually that, and that theme And that theme of control plays, comes into, comes, uh, of, comes into play here, too, mm -hmm. with everyone trying to control her, you know, yeah. trying to control this, uh, her. Well, I, I, I do remember that was a weird criticism from a lot of with annihilation was the fact yeah, that the, too. the unit that goes in to investigate the, right. the mm -hmm. thing was an all-female unit yeah which now that we're seeing natalie portman's thor physique mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah i think she's capable of handling herself <laughs> yes for sure um but back to alex garland yeah i think he is um an established auteur at this point of his career Mm -hmm. um and i i again i, I need to go and, and and just go back to his entire filmography because i don't think i mean you i think you gentlemen have more of a, a better understanding of his of his works um has he ever done something that was mediocre or subpar i mean well i mean he, the only movies i'm aware of that he's done right now is ex machina and annihilation and now here men yeah. well he's so i'm not 
He's he actually wrote Dread actually, which <laughs> which I think was the better at, the better of the two Dread the two Dread. Oh, the, the Dread the definitely. the one with um actors name Carl is escaping Urban. me. Yeah, yeah, Urban. That's fantastic. The movie's yeah. great. He produced and wrote it. Yep, very underrated. Oh, very. Yeah, underrated. that's that's one of, one of the most comedy. underrated action movies. Yeah, and then he also wrote Sun. He wrote he wrote Sunshine, which I thought was which you know fantastic which, movie. Yes. Oh, Killian Murphy, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Danny yeah Sunshine is the one where they're trying to restart the uh, the sun. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Very yeah. underrated movie. That that is that is. <laughs> I was gonna say the last act of Sunshine. Now there's a trippy moment because yeah. uh, Danny Boyle directed that. one. But, it, but, but yeah, wait, so Garland wrote it. Apparently, the beach, the the, the Leonardo DiCaprio film from two thousand, is on his filmography hmm. as based on the novel by. I believe okay. he wrote it. He wrote the beach. That's pretty cool. It's a good hmm. movie. That's an underrated yes. one too. Thanks. Sun Sunshine. What a great science fiction movie. Yes, I one of my favorites of the last twenty years. Mm. Very underrated film. Nice. Very, yes. He also wrote Twenty Eight Days Later, mm. um, and but yeah, well, I was gonna yeah. say. But yeah, like I like, but yeah, that's one thing I love about him is that he's like he does genre movies. Yeah. Um. You know. All, you know. And a lot of them do have a fem- have a feminist have do have a feminist, uh, message or bent. And uh, but like he, he like he's he's not a, you know he's not a, he much like John Carpenter who's my favorite filmmaker. You're like mm. he's not afraid to make genre movies like you know mm-hmm. horror sci-fi action right. and he's not afraid to make them good. Yeah. And he's covered. He's covered quite a. He hasn't done that many movies, but the genres that he's yeah. covered are really diverse. Like it's a weird handful of random uh, genres, which is really respectable. So, yeah, uh, man, I'm still thinking of Men. This is just a great movie. <laughs> yeah. it just, it's really it, it. It like sticks in your your brain, like uh, like like a splinter in your brain, and and it, I don't know. It's just it, it lingers. Well, that's the um, Mario. At least me. At least made an impression. Then we go. Yeah, yeah, good or bad. At least it left you, left you pondering, left you thinking. Yeah, got that image stuck in your brain. Of course, of course. Um, so yeah, I say see it. Uh, see it. Yep. Yeah. yeah and Planning on it for certain. Yes, sir. Add that to your to your list, Mr. Godfrey. <laughs> All right. So that's men, and that is now playing in theaters. So, all righty, next up, we've got our coming attractions for this week. And it's kind of a light week in regards to new releases. Um, We've got a new documentary about Julia Child called Julia, how appropriate. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) We also have, oh, I know, uh, Forrest, you're excited for this. Yes. Crimes of the Future, the new David Cronenberg film. And his return to the to the horror genre. Yeah, the, so the, the body horror, horror yeah. The, horror the, the trailers, any any oh, indication man. of that. And I just want to take a moment now to uh to just discuss Cronenberg and how much of a genius he is. He's been working, I think, since the 70s, maybe 70s. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I think late 60s too. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think you're right. Um and the whole body horror mm-hmm. uh, genre, the Godfather. He body horror. basically created this genre, this subgenre of horror, mm-hmm. um, and just the weirdest, sickest stuff. Yep. You know, you think of the Fly, um, scanners, the scanners, video drone, crash, yeah. uh, history of violence. Well, that's not well. That's not like not horror, but still like a great film. Still a great film. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's, and, it's got some brutality in it though. History of Violence has some very brutal moments. Mm-hmm. History of Violence is actually the first Cronenberg and, film I saw that got me into. Uh, oh, he did Eastern Promises, right, with Vigo. Yeah, yeah that he, was a great. Yeah, one too. he's been yeah, working which um, you can say is not a he's horror working. movie, but Vigo if Morton's you give me a yeah. naked knife fight inside of a Russian, uh. So uh, that that bad. fight was terrifying and so good, and oh, man. Even, that, that that made me cling to everything on my body. Even more subdued thriller uh, dr- drama thrillers like Maps to the Stars are really mm-hmm. good. Um, he's been working with Viggo Mortensen since I think uh, History of Violence two thousand. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's he's done a lot with um, actually Robert Pattinson in recent in the recent uh, the last decade. Yeah. Um, so he, he, he like picks his golden boy, mm-hmm. you know, his, his star actor and, uh, he just runs with it. He wants to see whatever kind of craziness the, the performance will bring out. And, uh, just, he's such a great film. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's up there. I think it's, it's him and Dave and, and, uh, John Carpenter is some of my favorite horror directors. Absolutely. Those two, I would say those two, Wes Craven, yeah. uh, Toby Hooper. Yeah. 
Definitely. So yeah. And then it was sci- as far as like sci-fi, because he, he has sci-fi too. Right. Or like his movies combined sci-fi with the horror, horror. Like I would put him up there with James Cameron and Paul Verhoeven mm-hmm. among well, like my just, favorite. Yeah, based on the trailer yeah. for Crimes of Humanity. I, like I don't know, like it's like I'm getting a hardcore science fiction, but a, a weird like HR Giger feel also to a lot of the stuff that was Absolutely. Showing. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't I actually haven't seen the trailer yet, but um I have. I love it's, HR Giger. It's yeah, it's something. Giger. Okay. And it would make sense that the that there's that that Gagiri, the Gagirian mm. influence, you know, given that it, you know, Alien itself is a body horror movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um they have and like there's also that the, all like that psychosexual mm-hmm. um yeah should be a good one and you're gonna go see it right um i'm going to a screen next friday with uh vigo morton with vigo mortensen and leah sado will be in attendance she's at beautiful. alamo draft house in brooklyn she's beautiful if you get to meet her just get a get a picture and autograph absolutely or something. <laughs> I, will, I will i will take a picture with her and make every guy Make every guy on my Instagram and Facebook page jealous. She was um, the Bond girl in No Time to Die, and the previous one before that, Spectre, uh, Spectre right? Yes, yep. and also in, uh, she had a, a she, small part in French Dispatch. And she was in Blue is the Warmest Color. Nice, as the girl with the blue hair. Just a beautiful, talented French actress, and uh, yeah. She, and <laughs> for a little bit more out there, she was also the body and the voice of uh, Fragile in Death Stranding. All right. <laughs> Cool. All right. So crimes of the future, uh, that might be an upcoming review. I, I, I it's, a, it's a strong possibility. Uh, we also have on the coming attractions, a drama horror thriller called uh, Watcher, uh, not to be confused with the 2000 uh, Keanu Reeves thriller. <laughs> um, and then rounding things out, we've got a horror film, a lot of horror and thrillers this week yeah. um, <laughs> called Dash Cam. And that, this is actually was pretty cool. Two friends on a horror-fueled road trip and live stream the most terrifying night of their lives. Is this a found footage film? It is. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll admit, that's the one genre of horror I do not care. I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it's and granted it wasn't found footage. I thought, I never thought I would like the whole from the desktop movie. You know, like, oh, what if it's all in somebody's computer? But then that, what was that? That John Cho movie, what, was it uh, Searching? Searching, or? that was great. Actually, then that, that came out and I'm just like, never mind. If you can make a movie this good off of the concept hmm. of from somebody's screen, then who knows? They call it a computer screen, computer screen horror. It's a computer screen horror film. Yeah. And, oh, like, and I, I was just like, this is the dumbest thing. And then I watched <laughs> Searching and I'm like, never mind. This is really good. Like, if you, you know, do it like this, I will see more of this. If you yeah. have, if you have a, cr- a smart and creative enough director, you can yep. definitely make it work mm-hmm. really well. Mm. Um, and that's what the whole found footage genre is. It's about creativity with something so uh, so m- you know minimal. Um, yep. uh, what comes to mind is uh, Cloverfield. That's one of my favorite sci-fi horror films of all time. Yeah, and I, 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 yeah, I would. I, I really would love to see somebody do something really creative with it. Like, be, like, and I mean, granted, that was Abrams there. So you definitely had a big powerhouse like that. But I would love to see somebody with horror creativity do something. Because I, I think found footage has a lot of potential. Yeah. Just a lot of directors have fumbled the ball and yeah. it, it just they ruin it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's just a very, it's a, it's a tricky thing to, to pull off. But, oh, yeah. you know, they, they're, the movies are out there. Yeah. So, okie dokie. God, this is a very horror-centric episode. <laughs> Fair uh, upcoming. Yeah, but like we started things off nice, light, and fluffy with Chippendale, <laughs> and then the second half got just really dark and uh-huh. took, took a turn. But yeah, uh, especially, <laughs> especially for summer movies, you don't expect a lot of horror stuff. In that. <laughs> right, you, you right. do expect more of the blockbusters. I mean, we've got Thor coming up and Jurassic yep. World. So and, yeah, you know, and and Top Gun. So those are the yep. fun movies. So I think it's a, it's like a, so far this, the summer, the, well, the spring uh, is t- turning out to be uh, kind of, it, it's looking bright. I, I'd say yeah. I'm very optimistic about this summer. So, okay, cool, cool. So let's see. All right. So dash cam, that's the, oh, and also it's, it's produced by uh, Blumhouse, Blumhouse. 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 Um, okay. Okay. J- Jason Blum and, and Blumhouse Productions. So there's some potential there. Uh, in maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the found footage movie we've been waiting for. Oh, fingers mm-hmm. crossed. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. Um, yeah, 14 years after Cloverfield, maybe we'll get uh, we'll get lucky. Yeah, 
<laughs> was it 14 or yeah, 40, yeah, 40. yeah how, how long has it been since the original Blair Witch? Oh man, that was 99. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this, with them starting all this. Actually, I think you can go, go further back to 1980 with Cannibal Holocaust. Okay. Mm. That was like the first found footage horror, but also the most and also the most controversial. <laughs> nice. Good to know. Good to know. And I just want to plug something uh, right now. So I was recently mailed a uh, Blu-ray DVD and digital screener copy of uh, Titan, Teen Titans Go and uh, DC Superhero Girls Mayhem in the Multiverse. <laughs> uh, it's now available on Blu-ray yes. DVD and digital. And um, there it is right there. This is a lot of fun. everybody. Yep, it's all about the multiverse these days. Yeah, from for, 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 yeah, we go from everything everywhere all at once. once to Doctor Strange, Strange now, now this. DC. <laughs> so it, it it's it's a nice fun uh, family friendly uh, cartoon movie. Uh, so you could check that out now. Uh, latest offering from DC Comics. <laughs> um, yeah, they are, they're cranking out animated. I, that's, stuff. I've always felt like compared to Marvel, that's their strong suit. Yeah, uh, yes, with animation, right? Except for the, some, they they came out. Wonder Woman and Shazam were pretty strong live action entries. Yeah, and, and, he, and, I, and I did like the first, and I did like Aquaman and Birds of Prey. Yeah, and, then, and the and the Suicide yeah. Squad. But they they don't have the the the, the cohesiveness right. of Marvel. They've tried to do it, but it just it hasn't yeah. worked for them. So I don't far. know why not. They just can't really. Well, they're there's tighter. Like, playing catch up. The, su- the Suicide Squad was really good, but that wasn't suitable for chi- for children. Um, you know, I think a, a super. I've said this before. I think a superhero movie should be should cater to both adults and children. I think it. Does, I think it depends it's on the, the character. It, pretend, yeah. it depends on the character, really. It, it all comes down to the fact that Marvel did a very good job building themselves up, and they took. They took the time, they took the care, mm-hmm. and they had somebody like Kevin Feige constantly making sure the ship was going on the right path. And the problem was um, they basically gave it all to Snyder, and Snyder, no matter what you think of him, was the absolute worst possible choice yes. for for launching all of this. I and, felt, I've always felt like he's, I mean, I did like 300 back when it came out, but I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I was 19 in college when it came out. But mm. overall, I feel like with his, a lot of his comp, a lot of his comp work, he only has a surface level understanding of the characters. But the Watchmen was, I mean, pretty, was, yeah. was pretty rich. It's, a, it's the thing of, it's like, it's the problem of, I, I, I do think Zack Snyder is an incredibly talented director. I think he's a great storyteller. Right. It's just what I, what, what him and I, it, there, there, you could not have for me somebody on the, on the most opposite side of what a superhero thing is. Mm-hmm. And what interests him, what interests him, I have absolutely no interest in whatsoever when it comes exactly. to, to his viewpoint. Yeah, what was the movie he did last year on Netflix? Uh, Army, Army of the Dead. Oh. The Army of the Dead. Yeah, I was not a fan of that at all. It was just it was overlong and yeah. uninteresting, and it, it was just a it was just lame. I, I was not impressed by that at all. But um, you it know, wasn't the uh, was it the number one fan favorite movie at the Oscars? <laughs> oh, his, his Justice <laughs> League was number one. Was the yeah. fan favorite at the Oscars? Oh dear. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, DC is great at the animated stuff, so they got to yep, keep doing that. That's their bread and butter, basically. Um, I'm hoping we get a, a, a really good Justice League movie in the future. That's not, you know, borderline black and white and just morbid and <laughs> over violent and just nasty. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I actually, don't, I don't know. There were elements of it that were okay. No, they, what they need, what DC needs to do is stop trying to make make this is stop trying to put fit all their characters. In the Batman mold, only Batman can be Batman. Yeah, let Superman be Superman, and mm-hmm. so on, and uh, so on and so forth. I mean, I'm exactly. Not, yeah. <coughs> what's happening with the the Flash movies? Ezra Miller. The, 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 oh God, what's they, going on with that? <laughs> well, that was supposed to come out this fall, but then they pushed it back to next year, right. and then Ezra, yeah. he had that 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 allegation. All, all the altercations he keeps getting into in Hawaii. Like somebody needs to strap him down and figure out what's going on with him. Because, it sucks because yeah, he, he's the funniest and most interesting superhero in the DC uh, live action mm-hmm. stuff right now. I don't now. know. At this point, they just need to send like let, let Michael like as far as like doing press tours and stuff. They need to just let Michael Keaton handle it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, basically. Oh, that that's so, gonna be exciting. That means like, how long I mean, how long this movie's already people, been in production. Hell, I mean, yeah. I mean, who's yeah. I mean, how many, I'm wondering how many people are really excited to see the Flash, and how many are just there, are just <laughs> you know excited to see Michael Keaton back as Batman. Yeah, no one no one really cares about the Flash. We just want to see Keaton. It's been well, 30, then I, thirty freaking I was, years. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. I was going to say, considering that this basically is DC live action wading into the multiverse with uh, the fact that we're going to be getting the alternate universe Batmans and everything in this one. So, oh man, DC, DC is all over the place. So we just had the Batman. We have yep. all these shows. Uh, we've got, you know, the Bat Woman. But, but actually, though, yeah, but Pennyworth. The, actually, all well, yeah, the CW shows, yeah. Getting, a lot of those shows are getting canceled by the CW. Are these all... Because CW is selling, yeah. Are they all separate little universes? Or are they the, TV, gonna... the TV stuff is all in one... It's, most of the TV shows are in one universe. Most, okay. yeah. Because I know the TV shows, Arrow, Flash, and all them, had yeah. their, their Infinite Crisis, where they all yeah. had the crossovers. Okay. And we and so, Brandon Routh, and Brandon Routh reprised, reprised his role as Superman. Yeah, but, where he, but he was already to Superman, but yeah. From my perspective, it just looks a little chaotic and sloppy, the way they're it, <laughs> it, I mean, it is in the sense that, that the CW shows are kept separately. And I yeah. think that's, again, the Marvel thing is that Marvel has been very careful about everything under the umbrella. And mm -hmm. so, and I think DC was just so like, we're just going to try everything. Right. And, and so that's why it's like, whereas there's like Marvel, you have a clear, this is the timeline, the TVA mm -hmm. approved timeline. <laughs> and, and with DC, it's just like, ah. Oh, oh. Right, exactly. Thank you. And is that because Feige is just a smarter businessman? He's he's like I, I think they just I think that was always the intention. Right. I think they they kept Feige and they kept and they kept all that in there for mm -hmm. Marvel to always have that 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 approachability. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why they've always made sure that if if Feige comes to Disney with anything, they're like, okay, what do you need? What do you want? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty great and. Yeah. I love everything that's come under, you know. And all, yeah, that's another problem is that DC, like DC, they hire people, like Feige is someone who understands both movies and comics. Right, right. Yeah. Um, Fanboy, right? Whereas yeah. D, DC doesn't have anybody like that. They had, they tried Snyder, who's more of a movie guy. Right. And then he, that's, that failed. They tried Jeff Johns, who's more of a comic book guy. Right. And that right. failed. And that failed. And, well, I mean, Nolan also, funny. they had Nolan at first, but Nolan was so busy on his other stuff. He, yeah. I feel like he doesn't, he wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. And plus, Nolan and Snyder apparently just were kind of lockstep in what they wanted to do. So whatever Snyder wanted, Nolan was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, and like Nolan's just there really in name, in name only. Right. Yeah. So we'll so. see what the future will bring for DC. I don't know yeah. if it's a bright... I think they're, I think they're writing their ship. I, I think mm -hmm. every the things they've made recently have been very promising. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I mean, the Suicide Squad is definitely one of the best superhero movies yep. in the past five years. So a perfect was, example, and then the and the Peacemaker TV show was fantastic oh yeah. as well. Brilliant! See, that was brilliant. A brilliant uh, continuation. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that's the way all the their properties should go. Right. So I don't know. We'll see. We need more uh, James Gunn stuff. I right. think so. <laughs> yep. Eric, I know you're a fan. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. and you know, because James Gunn, you know, he was a Trump. He, he's a Trump oh, guy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. But he's busy. He's getting uh, Guardians 3 all taken care of right now, so we're going to be getting that here. Perfect, perfect. Cool. All right. Um, so we've got a couple minutes left. Um, is there anything you guys want to plug? Uh, Eric, sir? <laughs> Not much going on for me. Just kind of school and work and all the usual. Cool. I'll plug my the wife's uh, donuts at <laughs> the, uh, the Lodge, uh, the Law of Donut Engineering in Jersey City. Is uh, Senor Dobby awake, awake right now? Uh, he is, but he's in the other room, unfortunately. Oh. So mascot is not available right now. <laughs> well, tell him I, I, I say I say hello, and I, I yeah, want he's probably five. passed out on the couch right now. <laughs> tell him I want my five bucks back. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bennett. Any uh, plugs for you, sir? Um, well, I mean, well, I just a couple. I forgot forgot to add a couple uh, movies I saw because I, I did I did catch Poltergeist and uh, the RoboCop at Alamo for their 30, oh yeah fortieth and thirty fifth anniversaries respectfully. Um, oh, well, that was at Alamo. Uh, yes, those were both at Alamo. Did downtown I, or Brooklyn? Uh, that bro uh downtown. Okay. So, but there's that. But then, but you know, anyway, I was gonna go home and uh, finish Star Wars, A New Hope. Yep. Nice. And then uh, back, and then back to the future, and then back to the future part two and Ninja Turtles this weekend. Um, cool. Project wise, I mean, a little slow. It's a little, I, you know, a little bit of downtime right now. I was in a, I did work on a music video for punk rock. I was in a music video for a band called Buck Cat Bite recently. Mm. Um, nice. Where oh, was that trauma related? Or? Um, I mean, there were trauma people involved, but it wasn't trauma production. Okay. 
Um, mm. But it was direct, it's directed by it was uh, directed by Ian fin, fin, I think Finance is his name, but he's he's in Bring on the Damned. Okay. Yeah, I just want to mention uh, Bring on the Damned, uh, this independent uh, short film. Horror film. Actually, it's an anthology. Oh, it's a, okay. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be released by Troma, and Forrest and I were uh, lucky enough to have been extras in a few yep. scenes and uh, had a lot of fun doing that. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to be looking for it. They'll, they'll probably need extras again. And would not, it wouldn't surprise, I mean, I haven't seen anything about it, but it wouldn't surprise me if they need. Yeah, well, I, I look forward to that call. <laughs> well, we, will, we will answer the call. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. I love it. That's great. Um, and as for me, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I'll be with Forrest uh, this Saturday for Ninja Turtles, followed by Back to the Future Part Two. Very excited. Mm -hmm. I, I was excited the, the other night to see the first movie on the big screen again, but to just the idea of seeing the second one, which is yes. actually my my favorite out of the trilogy, uh, to wow. see that on the big screen. I take. I am like, I, I, it's like a dream come true. I, I, I'm very excited and I'm, I'm happy I get to share that experience with you, sir. It's going to be a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Um, so yeah, that's this Saturday. Uh, you'll hear all about it uh, next time we're on the show. And uh, yeah, I just want to just plug the show under the radar every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Uh, it's on the Lifestyle Channel. And you can also check it out on cable TV, uh, Fios 34, RCN 83, and Spectrum 56 and 1996. Also, if you want to see previous episodes, interviews, uh, feature length commentaries, you can just visit the YouTube channel, Unger the Radar, as check out the videos there, subscribe, share, and uh, spread the word. Uh, but yeah, I want to thank my guest tonight, Mr. Paris Bennett. Thank you, sir. Randy, thank you for having me on, I think on again. It's always yeah. a great, to great time talking to you and anybody and everyone else we have on here. Yes, of course, of course. And Mr. Eric Godfrey, thank you, sir. No, thanks uh, again for having me. Yeah, anytime, anytime. And, and again, tell Dobby I say hello. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Randy Unger. This has been Unger the Radar. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>